Hello, Lake Villa 41 employee or anyone else employed to provide Lake Villa 41 students or staff services. This training is to inform you of the Lake Villa 41 lockdown procedures. At the end of this video, actually it's going to be a series of videos, we hope you will understand and be able to apply the ALICE principles in any situation here or in any public venue, not only for your safety, but the safety of our students. So let's get started. First of all, Alice is based on the premise that information, authorization, and proactive training are the key to surviving an active shooter incident. What does Alice stand for? Uh, you can read it for yourself, but alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. Uh, we will come back to all these components a little later, but we are going to cover a bit of the history of lockdowns first. Passive versus proactive response strategies. So there's been 25 years of mass shooting events um, that have yielded uh, a lot of uh, data for law enforcement. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to have you take a guess of how long does it take law enforcement to get to active shooting uh, events. So think about that. Going to give you a little bit of time. What is the average amount of time it takes for law enforcement to get to an active shooting event? There it is. The average is five to six minutes. And we also we are also going to come back to that um, a little bit later in a couple more slides. Now the origin of the lockdown. Do you remember? Probably not, because I didn't. Uh, it began in Los Angeles and uh, it happened, uh, the gangs were doing drive-bys, shooting at windows, sometimes hitting schools. So they came up uh, through law enforcement, a policy of training students and staff in the building to duck under the windows, um, darken, pull the shades down, and try and get underneath shelves. And basically, that is how the lockdown originated. It wasn't for... Uh, people coming into the building, but we've been doing the same thing for a long time. So here's some data of some very tragic uh, incidents using the traditional lockdown. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the total minutes of shooting. The total minutes of shooting in Columbine was eight and a half minutes. Virginia Tech, eight. Sandy Hook, five. We did say it takes, on average, for law enforcement to get to a shooting event, five to six minutes. So you could see by the time law enforcement um, arrived at Sandy Hook, it was already over. Virginia Tech, Columbine. And in the meantime, the casualty rate was 50% at all three shooting events. And you could see the number of wounded and killed, which was horrific. Now we're going to take a look at the Columbine Library. All right, this picture actually shows you kind of the placement of, of people and injured and a path of the killers um, in the library. So this was the library. In fact, we're going to listen to a video, a 911 call from the librarian. And when you listen to it, I want you to hear what the librarian says about the shooters, where the shooters are, and then we're going to come back. Here's the video. I gotta find the spot where I want. and Dylan will carry out the most brutal part of their assault on the school. The attack on the 56 students and staff hiding in the library. Get up! Everybody with white hats, stand up! This is for all the shit you've given us for the past four years! We heard, like, popping, and we didn't know what it was, and then I looked out the window, and then 
and there was this guy throwing like a pipe bomb at all the cars and then he came in the they like started blowing up and shooting everyone in the cafeteria and then you could hear him laughing and running upstairs and they were shooting anyone of color wearing a white hat or playing a sport and they didn't care who it was and it was all at close range. Yes, I'm a uh, teacher at Columbine High School. There was a student here with a gun. He was shot out of window. I believe one of them. Um, yeah, she got shot. Um, I'm in Columbine High School. I don't know what's in my shoulder. If it was just a last minute or what. Um, okay, is there anybody been injured? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the school is in a panic. And I'm in the library. I've got students down. I'm at the table, kids. Head down to the table. Um, kids are screaming. Some of the teachers um, are, you know, trying to get the whole thing. We need police here. Okay. okay. We're getting them there. Please, yes, Who is the student, ma'am? I do not know who the student is. Okay. I saw a student outside. I was in hold and hold and hold. Okay. I was on hold and I saw a guy. I said, what's going on out there? And he said, that was probably something else. It's probably a joke. I said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. And I went walking outside. I said, he's in there. See what was going on. And he turned the gun straight at us and shot. And my dad, the window went out. And the kid standing there with me. I think he got hit. Okay. Something on my shoulder. Okay. We've got help on the way, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. Stay in the line of Oh, God. Do we know where he's at? I'm sorry? Do we know where he's at? Okay. I'm in the library, but he's up here. He's right outside of here. He's outside? He's outside of the hall. Outside of the hall? Outside of the hall. Okay. There are alarms. He's going off the smoke. My dog's smoke is like coming into this room. Okay. I've got the kids under the table here. I don't know what's happening in the rest of the building. Most of us smoke and go by. I don't know. I'm sure someone has to be calling 911. Yes. We've got a lot of people on. Okay. I just want you to stay in the line with me. We need to know what's going on. Okay. Okay. I am on the floor. Okay. You've got the kids there. And I've got every student in this library on the floor. You better stay on the floor. Is there any way you can lock the doors? Um, smoke is coming in from out there and I'm a little bit. The gun is right outside the library door. Okay. I don't think I'm going to go out there. Okay. You're at home. I got three children. Okay. We got it. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the door to shut the the door. Okay. I've got the kids on the floor. Um, I got all the kids in the library on the floor. We have paramedics, we have fire, and we have police on route. Okay, sir? Okay. Okay. Kind of eerie to listen to that, actually. Um, first of all, what would you have done? Think about it. Uh, your your school trains you on how to react to a situation um, that was not meant for a, per, a shooter to come in the building. As you as you heard before, it was it was meant more for a shooter outside the building. Um, we can't fault this teacher ever for what she was trained to do. She was trying to protect the kids as best as possible. And you could hear the dispatcher telling her to stay on. Quite honestly, there was an exit right outside here. And if they had been trained in Alice, they could have escaped, which is kind of, well, it's not kind of, it's, it's very disheartening. So is this all we really need to know in order to respond to a violent intruder? Do we want to just sit in a corner waiting to be shot? We sure hope not uh, in order to have a chance. But what else do we need to know? All right, so this is a chart of a bunch of different shooting events. And I'm going to come over here and show you this is 46% and 40%. That's 86% of the shootings ended in violence by applied force, either by uh, police, um, by the shooter, uh, the shooter killing themselves. So we know that 86% of the active shootings end in violence. So will a passive lockdown help with those statistics? No, not at all. We need to do something. And that's just repeating what I just said. This is a good chart. Here is an example. When police resist, 
And remember, the average uh, time for police to get there is five to six minutes. Most of the shooting is up, is over. You can see the casualty rate is much worse. Killed, injured, and this is the total of the two. When the shooter resists, all right, it drops a little bit. This is, um, and then when the victim resists, it goes down quite a bit. So waiting for the police to arrive causes more casualties, quite honestly. But we could bide the police more time to be able to help us. All right, so there is a huge movement now um, all across the country, actually. Uh, U.S. Department of Homeland Security adopted Get Out, Hide Out, and Take Out. The International Association of, of Chiefs of Police has highlighted that teachers get to choose to evacuate or lock down. They have choice, and active resistance is absolutely an option in order to delay the time so police could get there. Or 